astrology. This is Henry Seltzer, and uh, you can see we have a kind of a different background than usual. This time I'm vacationing in, in uh, Oregon, and in fact we're going to see the eclipse on Monday, grid willing. Uh, so that'll be exciting. Um, the eclipse that's coming up, the solar eclipse at 28 degrees of Leo, is, is very powerful, and we want to talk about that and <clears throat> get people kind of tuned in to what is going on as well as to this uh, pretty gnarly Mercury retrograde that just began uh, on the 12th, you know, so that's uh, something that's in the background of this eclipse. Uh, when Mercury retrograded, it was exactly opposite Neptune, and uh, I, I think it's been uh, evident, at least for me, it's been evident that this is a pretty, a pretty powerful Mercury retrograde period, but of course it's very good for taking a spiritual approach, slowing down, looking inside, trying to figure out how things are with you uh, in, a, in a constructive way. So let me go ahead and, and bring the chart up. And to do that, I'll just uh, push these buttons here. And... Okay, now here's the chart for the solar eclipse itself. You should be able to see it. Um, one thing we notice with this um, lineup is that there's quite a bit of Leo right here. So we have Mars and Leo, the North Node as well, very close, uh, which is the definition of an eclipse, a new moon right on the nodal axis. So uh, the North Node is at 24, the Sun and Moon are at 28 degrees, 53 minutes. And uh, what's, of course, fascinating is that also Uranus is at 28 degrees and 23 minutes, so half a degree, 30 minutes different uh, from the actual eclipse degree. So this means uh, that we have quite a bit of Uranus in the, in the configurations right now. We have had and we continue to have. It's been amped up by its con close conjunction, which is getting a little wider now, but it's going to, uh, it's gonna, not going to probably ever go back completely. But um, we have uh, Eris and Uranus that have been together. They were together in June of 2016 when all of the Trump campaign and all of the Bernie Sanders campaign was going on. and It was quite quite exciting. A new surprise every week, really. And so uh, that combination uh, is also active now with a revolutionary uh, frame of mind that we see in the capital R resistance movement. Uh, we can see it, uh, especially with the Eris idea of a feminine warrior, we could see it in the March on Washington, the Women's March on Washington, about a week after the actual inauguration. So, uh, and just one example, I mean, Standing Rock is another great example of people taking a stand for themselves, taking, if necessary, a rebellious attitude for something that they deeply believe, that they, each one, felt that was their only way to go. That was what matched their, their values uh, to the core, and they took action on it. That's the signature of this new planetary energy, Eris, which I consider to be a feminine warrior energy for soul intention, and I've got so much evidence for that. And a lot of that evidence, a lot of that evidence is actually uh, in my book, which is uh, called The Tenth Planet. But anyway, to get on with the rest of this configuration, one thing that's important to notice uh, is there is a minor aspect of a sesquiquadrate between um, well, you can't you can't actually see it on here. I don't think it shows on this on this. But there is a sesquiquadrate between the Sun and Moon and Pluto as well. So both Pluto and Uranus are highlighted, and they are still uh, in their square. Um, their square lasts until 2020. If you take the orbs that Rick Tarnas talks about in his uh, seminal book Cosmos and Psyche, which is a 15 degree orb. Um, or a 10 degree orb for a square. And so um, coming up on 2020, it's very interesting to, to look at that because that's the transformation that this country is in the midst of. Uh, we're in the aftermath now of the, of the exact hits of Uranus and Pluto, which was in 2015 or so, you know, seven exact hits. And uh, really, uh, I think we're seeing quite a bit of fallout from that. You know, we're seeing are the values from the earlier time of the 60s when Pluto and Uranus were in conjunction, uh, are those values viable? I mean, can we have peace, love, and harmony 
and, and get away with it in the real world um, in terms of the actual functioning society? And that's one of the big questions for our times. And, you know, uh, especially in the younger generations, you see quite a bit of hope and faith that we can have a spiritual environment, that there is a new spirituality that is emerging um, out of the dead past of the Western uh, world, uh, you could say. <clears throat> a lot of our institutions that kept people in a moral frame of mind are disappearing or have disappeared, and only the shell remains, um, only the kind of uh, remnants of, of what was once, you know, kept everybody uh, held up in, in faith, you know, in the, in the Christian era, or, or in other eras, too, you know, in, this, in terms of fundamental Islam and, and so on. Um, I think that those are, um, not to put them down, it's wonderful if that's being practiced, but I think that they, they tend to be fading out in this modern uh, materialistic world, and we need something to take their place. And so there's a more general spirituality that's emerging, and astrology is part of that, you know, to recognize that uh, there is a valid connection between what the universe is telling us in terms of the planetary positions is speaking back to us in a way, just like we're speaking to the universe and trying to figure out who we are and what we're up to. And through the psychological um, explorations of Carl Jung and many others following in his footsteps, we've come to realize that the unconscious is a very important part of what we're up to and maybe knows more than, than we do consciously. Uh, and can be said to be speaking for our higher self, can said to be speak, speaking for the universe, other dimensionality, angel guides, things that are not really recognized in the, in the modern uh, materialistic worldview. So that's a bit of a change that's, uh, or a big change that's coming to this uh, culture, and it's signaled by many things, including this Uranus-Pluto square, which is still winding up running through 2020 when we may see a vastly different election than we saw last time. Uh, at least that's one hope of people that don't want to see business as usual any longer. Another thing to recognize in this configuration is a prominent Saturn, which shows up near the top of the chart. Uh, if you use the uh, natural chart with areas on the ascendant going around to Capricorn and the midheaven, uh, the fact of the matter is we have a grand trine in fire including Eris at 23 of Aries, and including Mars at 20 degrees of Leo, making a grand trine in fire and indicating that because of this trine between Mars and Saturn, we have a tendency to find that things are not working as well as they could be. They, they keep getting hung up, slowed down. Mercury's also retrograde. So we want to look at the upside of these things and not say, oh, gee, this is terrible. We want to look at the upside and say, well, um, it gives us time to reflect. It gives us time to look into what's really happening for us. It's a great time to start to really pay attention to everything that's going on. Uh, if there's reactivity, um, look into the origins of that. Um, a friend of mine says, you're never angry for the reason that you think you are. And what he means by that is it gets back to core issues. When the anger comes, a lot of times it's triggered by surface events but it's not really the person that you're dealing with that's the problem. It's your, your own deep-seated anger that may be coming out. And if you take time to look into that, to suss it out and feel, feel into it, um, it's a very good time to do that and to make some progress with uh, tuning into inner wounding. And of course, I haven't talked about it too much lately, but Chiron at 27 degrees of Pisces in 47 minutes is actually part of these configurations that we've been having, and it's part of this uh, new moon configuration because uh, being close to uh, that semi-sextile with Uranus, which has been constant over the last month or two months, at least, maybe more, actually. And uh, another thing, um, and of course the eclipse degree now uh, makes that uh, in conjunct or 150 degree aspect. So there is a lot of Chiron in the, in the atmosphere, the psychic atmosphere, the astrological currents. Uh, good to keep in mind that, you know, our inner wounding can be something that gets in the way. It can be something that were we to tune in and understand it better, we might be able to uh, better navigate uh, the situations that we're in. 
They say follow your fears. In other words, if you find that you're afraid of something, maybe that's the very thing to go for. Maybe that's the very thing that you're supposed to be doing. And uh, you have to be able to distinguish between when it makes sense to obey the fearful notion that maybe this isn't the right thing to do versus is that an old wound that's coming up and just preventing me from being the fullest self that I can be, which again gets back to Eris because Eris is all about tuning into those deep places inside yourself that really correspond to your deepest values, your most uh, sincere values, and, and to act on those in consonant with what's inside. And then maybe you'll find meaning and, and purpose in your life. So in addition to <clears throat> what we've talked about so far in this pretty major configuration, there is also a presence of Neptune in the fact that Neptune and Uranus are in a semi-square relationship to each other. You can put the mouse on it and you can see in the time passage of software within a tenth of a degree. You can see down here if you can see that little writing. And then <clears throat> also um, something to think about uh, there is also a parallel between Neptune and Jupiter. I can show that too because uh, if we right click we find that um, Neptune has a declination of 7 degrees 26 minutes which is 7.4 degrees and Jupiter is about half a degree away from that 6.8 so anyway um, this is this is how uh, Neptune comes into the picture as well which is a sense of spirituality we have uh, a feeling that maybe there's a way to make it right if we go to another dimension of perspective where we uh, see that this is kind of all meant. There's a way that this is training wheels for uh, emerging a new culture of humanity and this is very important to recognize. So, And it connects to this uh, very strong new moon and eclipse which is really involved in all the interplanet movements right now. Mars is going to get to that point fairly, fairly soon by September 3rd. And at the same time, Mercury moving backwards is going to get to that point. So we have coming up a Mars-Mercury conjunction on the eclipse degree. Uh, September 3rd and September 5th is the actual station in Mercury direct. So stationing Mercury uh, conjunct Mars on September 3rd. Um, it's not a violent thing. It's just a, a time to really reflect and think and look inside. Uh, a time to articulate what's deep inside ourselves and to reflect upon that. The other thing being that um, Mars at 20 degrees, Jupiter at 20 degrees, making a perfect sextile, Saturn at 21 degrees, so this really brings the Saturn-Jupiter into play, and Saturn and Jupiter are connected, they're called social planets, they're connected with uh, how we're faring as a culture, and we see a little bit of both in the sense that um, Jupiter is really holding us up and making us recognize there's a lot of cause for optimism as well as fear and worry about the way things are. And at the same time, Saturn can be, Saturn with Jupiter on top of Jupiter can be a loss of faith. So, you know, we have that to deal with. We have um, the optimism that's potentially there and we have the fear that that optimism is false and we're not really getting anywhere and everything is dire and the whole world is collapsing around us. And we have to steer a middle course between those two. So a very powerful new moon, um, powerful just because it's an eclipse, uh, powerful as well because this 28 degree mark uh, intersects with Uranus and it will intersect with, with Mars later in, well, not later in this month, but the beginning of next month. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say, except there's one more thing that we need to bring up. Um, how would that eclipse degree hit the chart of Donald Trump? We normally wouldn't think of that particularly, except that Trump himself was born under an eclipse. So this is Trump's chart, June 14th, 1946, 10.54 a.m., New York. And uh, you can see the sun in his chart is 22 degrees. Moon is 21. You can see here's the eclipse degree, right? I mean, sorry, here's the uh, north, the south node, and here's the nodal Maybe axis. Can't see Donald Trump's chart. Um, oh, that's interesting. Okay, it looks like the chart's coming up now. That's good. So we have the sun at 22, 
the moon at 21. He's born uh, right on the north node, the sun on the north node. So this is an eclipse chart. And um, of course, the main, the main thing that's absolutely amazing about this chart is that the sun and moon at 28 degrees are right on his ascendant. So what does that mean to have a new moon on your ascendant? It's a very positive thing. It's a new beginning, but it can also be um, a new phase in your existence. It comes with Uranus, obviously, involved as well. And um, Saturn, look at Saturn. Saturn's at 21 degrees, 12 minutes. So is his moon at 21 degrees, 12 minutes. Saturn directly on his moon at the eclipse time and opposed to his sun. So he's going to go through some kind of limitation, a new, a new sense of limitation perhaps, uh, that could maybe uh, turn out well for him or it could maybe turn out to be a new phase um, in an unexpected way. Uh, we don't know really which. Um, certainly uh, the astrological indications are varied. You know, you can, you can read many different things and um, after the fact, you can look back and say, yes, that's consistent with the astrological symbolism. No wonder. It is a change. For sure, nothing's going to be quite the same um, for this presidency um, during the last half of this year, which is what the eclipse really represents as a six-month uh, turning point. So now I'm going to switch back, um, back to where we were, looking at the eclipse chart again. See if there's anything here that we, we feel we haven't covered. And if anybody uh, had a chance to tune in, we didn't have a chance to plan this very exactly, but if anybody had a chance to tune in and ask a question about this, I'd be happy to try to answer it. We'll see if anything comes through uh, towards the end here. But um, I think that's mostly what I wanted to say. We still have uh, Jupiter with Pluto. Uh, that square has moved to three degrees away, but that's still a square. And so uh, this configuration is so powerful. You know, you've got Jupiter opposite Eris making a T-square to Pluto. You've got uh, the eclipse degree, 28 degrees of Leo, matching uh, Uranus. And uh, there's just a lot going on right now. And we can really, <laughs> it's helpful to see that that's happening because uh, we look around us and we know there's a lot going on. We know there's a lot of terrorism, a lot of extremism, a lot of polarities with both Saturn and Uranus emphasized right now. Um, that really, really uh, emphasizes the polarity between uh, trying to go forward, trying to move forward with some, some things that are going to be helpful and progressive in society, and then the tugging back, the backlash of conservative holding back from too much change too fast. Uh, keep it slow, you know, try to keep it the way it is, uh, is the Saturn theme. So a little bit of both. Um, sometimes it's good to do one and sometimes the other. <laughs> and we can just uh, only uh, go forward as, as best we can, um, stumbling into ecstasy, as they say. So Leslie, I wonder if there's any questions that have come up. Oh, and she, oh, okay. So good. So I think that's it. Um, we want to let everybody have a good rest of the uh, summer and August and all that. And uh, be alert that September might be some, some dicey times, interesting times. Uh, the Chinese saying, may you live in interesting times, uh, is, is very applicable now. So... Uh, we're signing off, and we'll be speaking to you in another couple of weeks. Take care.